three, two, one, go. All right, so first, we're gonna put the helmet on. So you gotta be real careful with how you separate these pieces. You gotta be really careful. So read the instructions very carefully. So that was F8, L9, and O3. O3. So right So right here on the bottom of this piece, you got to be careful not to cut off the wrong thing or you have screwed yourself, and you don't want that. And then L9, which is over here somewhere. Uh, uh, some of them you can, but some of them, no, uh, most of them, no. You need a pair of nippers. But fortunately, you don't need glue. This is all, this is all snapped together. So we're gonna slap this baby on. You just gotta get the direction orientated correctly. Is that the right way? Looks like the right way. So you, s I don't know if the camera's gonna focus, but all the pieces will, whoop, there we go. But yeah, just follow along the instructions and you shouldn't get lost. All right, now we're on step two. So now we're putting the sides together first. So apparently we're working on the back of the helmet. So T2, that's this yellow piece here that's striped. I'm gonna try to keep the camera pointed in the right direction. So there's that piece. And now B1 and B2, which is the sides of the helmet. So that's this over here. We're just going to do the one first. Now since this is the first time I'm working on this one, I may be a little lost at first until I figure out the right direction. Ah, here we go. Alright. Got it. Alright. There we go. And I think this piece goes in in between. Yep, that looks right. And so that's how the back looks. So now we put the other side on. I've actually put the actual instruction manual to the side because uh, what you're seeing on screen is uh, the same thing. So this goes in on this side now.
There we go. There's there's the back. Okay, now here, now on the second armor, these side pieces were a pain in the neck, and I almost lost them. It's these little red pieces that go in the side. Luckily, this particular model kit is just being put together raw. It's not being painted. So these little tiny pieces are a pain in the neck, and I better grab my tweezers. All right, so this one is V2, so that goes on this side. And luckily, these go in a specific way. Because if it's not meant to go a certain way, it's not gonna go, period. And see, my fingers are pretty big. That's why I'm probably going to need these. But these might not work either. Okay, I think that fit. Alright, cool. It, it's in. It's in! There you go. See how I've already done the panel lining, the little stripes beforehand? So, don't have to deal with that later. Just wait when I start painting them, when I paint more. That'll be fun. Really, the hard part is the helmet because it's got the most intricate pieces. I think once the helmet is done, it's going to get easier there we go all right so that sides in So that's the back of the helmet done. So box two on this page is done. So now we're going to put the front of the helmet on. If I can remember what I did with that runner, which I think it's over here. Yep. So this goes on the front. Okay, B11, that is the front white piece of the helmet. Cut him from the gate. Like so. for the rest of the helmet and it looks like you can put these on in any order so we're just gonna go with the uh, the yellow fins first So 
So this one is what, T4? So this one goes on the, this side. Now, which way do they go? That's the tricky part. I think I had it on right the first time. But maybe not. Oh, I didn't have it on all the way. Alright, there's that fin. And you can find these basically on, like, you can go to eBay, Hobby Link Japan, any, any eBay store that has, like, if you look hard enough, you can find them. Now, right now, some, some places have them outrageously, like, a hundred bucks, because they just came out and people are trying to, like, capitalize on the, the new release, but if you pre-ordered ahead of time, like, you're pretty much in the clear. Right now for the black piece above the head, the head gem. Trying to position where you all can see it real nice and the camera focuses. That's the tricky part. Alright, so after this piece has been detached, this runner is clean. snaps right in. So there's the helmet. No, you, you 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 paint them before you assemble them if you want to paint it. Like if you want to paint this in like a different color scheme like let's say Storm Eagle like Storm Tornado then you can do that. So you paint X2 is my favorite by far. It's it's just it's it looks so good. So there's three face plates, but I'm gonna put one on just to finish the helmet. So you just put this piece in on the back of the helmet. We're going to do the shouting face because that's always the best. And then you just slip it up there and there you go. There's the helmet. Helmet's done. The shortest but... <laughs> It's the quickest. All right, now for the body. We will be putting those away. We will be doing those for a bit. All right, so now we're basically taking all the pieces off of this runner and we're building up the, the, the body center. Now these internal pieces you don't paint because it's never going to be seen on the outside. 
and you don't want to paint it because that the sometimes the paint can uh, act as an adhesive and it will make your pieces really stuck so you really have to be careful not to break anything double ball joint here this will connect the torso to the the lower part of the armor and we'll just snap that in like so go ahead and snip off the neck uh, what kind of paint do I use I use Tamiya uh, TS uh, paint I don't have my paints out right now or I'd show you what it looks like but there's TS and then there's PS paints uh, use TS that's what you use for these So just uh, look up Tamiya uh, TS dash. I think there. I think 54 is a brilliant blue. There's like red. There's even metallic colors, which which I paint each Kotobukiya X kit in a metallic color. Like uh, uh, only a couple of people have seen my metallic ones, like a uh, Conster. Conster's seen my uh, model kits in person. He, you, you ask him, he'll tell you how good they look. Oh, let me uh, disconnect these off the end runner because they go on where the they build the shoulder joint. I've done so many of these, I really don't need the instructions for like most of it because it's always the same. I've tried using testers paint. Testers paint goes on too thick. And uh, it's really messy. So I recommend Tamiya. They that's a really good uh really good paint. Okay, so L4 goes on this side. Does the other side, but oh well. Oh, it's turned backwards. Uh huh. That's different. Oh, they they did it. They did this backwards. It used to not be that way. Well, let me make sure I've got this orientated correctly then. Yeah, this is right. Okay. See on the on this block number one on this page, that that L one piece on the older like older models is the other way. You're seeing it from the other side. That's why it confused me a little bit. So there's there's that and now the neck I try to look at it from above here so that when you snap it on the neck's gonna look straight kind of like that
you get to see my my shirt. Hopefully, hopefully the camera is in a better spot now, so you see more of what's going on. Maybe I didn't have the camera in the right direction. Alright, so after that, now we're going to put the torso together. So these are on basically every every kit they all they all get put together the same all right now to detach this piece These pieces will hold the two halves of the uh, the midsection together. So we're gonna do we're gonna put these into the back. We can put the front on here. There. Once you hear that snap, it's on good. So there's there's those. And now you can just simply uh, put those together. Now for part three. Uh, this runner is now clear. Always check your runners and make sure all the pieces are before you toss them. Because <laughs> you don't want to lose any. Alright, so B10. That's this piece here. That's this blue piece here. And then T6, that is this little triangular piece right here. So basically we're putting the front of the armor on. Whoa, that that could have been nasty. Interesting. That gets put on different than yeah, uh, need a little help with that. There we go. So yeah, that's how it goes on the inside. That took a little effort. And now you just uh, throw that on the front. (laughs) 
Next page. Now for the back. Got a little piece I gotta cut here. Gotta cut the gate. Alright, we're good there. P6 and T5. Okay, so this goes on the back. Making sure it's all nice and secure. Nice, good fit. And now for the bottom half. I need my other pair of pliers to put these together now. <laughs> the these two pieces are a bitch. There we go. Good lord. So that goes there. This goes there. Then you throw this on the front. And there's still one piece that goes in on the front. The little... Don't know what you want to call it. That 
that's where that goes. There's that. And we just pop this old baby on. And just like that, the, uh, the armor's done. Let's hit the split. Gold! Alright. Now for the arms and the legs. But before I do that, you can do the hands. Uh, I'm going to. I'm not, I'm not going to cut out all the hands. I'm just going to cut out certain ones so that uh, we can kind of do a couple poses at the end. We'll do the Hadoken pose, so I'm gonna need these. I'm gonna need these specific hands. Uh, which ones? M6, M5. M10, M9. So it'll be these. Because I want to do the uh, the uh, box art pose at the end. Okay. And then on this runner, they give you these little ball joints that go part of the uh, part of the hands. These you can actually twist off because they're they're soft plastic. They're not hard plastic like the uh, all the other pieces are. These are pretty soft, so you don't have to really do much to get them how you want. So you just snap the hands together. And then put you one of these uh, ball joints in it, and there you go. You've got yeah, an interchangeable hand. So there's the two Hadoken hands. To let my fingers rest a second. The thing about my, me and my hands is like working with these little parts, my fingers can numb if I'm not careful or trying to get in a hurry. All right, well there's the three hands that I'll use. I'll put this one away for later. Alright, so on to the next page. 
now we're actually doing the shoulders. So you do each each one twice. So K one. So I'm gonna cut out both of them since you have to do it twice. And now, where are they? Oh, they're right here. Right here in front of my face. What I'm doing first, I'm cutting them off the runner, and then there's still a little bit of plastic left on the on the part. You cut those off next, and there you get a flat, nice, smooth cut. I'm surprised no one's done wide people blanket yet. <laughs> when the Kuwanger uh, stage came up. Ugh. Finally got through two weeks of work with one day off, so here I am. Now back on the topic of paint, like now I use spray, I use spray paint, like can of spray paint. You can also airbrush. I mean, a lot of people prefer airbrushing, but I just don't have that kind of money to spend on an airbrush kit. At least not yet. I mean, maybe with maybe with the pay I got last week, uh, maybe for special duty, but <laughs> nah. So we're putting together the inside of the shoulder, the basis for where the armor, the armor, the shoulder pad's gonna get built off of. Now the X3 shoulder joints are very, very like not what I don't I think they're not as well built as these are like the X4 one th this one the X2 the X4 model kit they all have the same they're built off of the same shoulder joint design but the X3 one is very very poor and for those that Ha actually have an X3 model kit like I think Lasecki's got one he knows it's it's very very poor in my opinion so now we're putting the two halves together here. I'm going to do one at a time to not uh, overcomplicate things. Oh, 
Oh, well, I guess I'd... Wait, did I? Uh-huh! Never mind. Well, I guess, uh... I clipped, I clipped two identical ones off. Huh. Silly me. Oh, well. Oh, that fell on the floor. Give me just a moment to find that piece up oh, right here at my feet. Alright, now where was I? So that that formed really well there on the side. Uh, no, I'm off to I'm on no, I got off work today. My my two days off are tomorrow and Friday. So I'm starting my two days off actually. But I'm getting a really, I'm getting a really nice check because I did, I was doing a relief for uh, somebody else. So I get like a relief pay, which is quite a bit more than what I'm usually making. All right, so that is, I kind of, I kind of skip step two there, but you're gonna have to do step two eventually. So you can skip around, but once you realize where you're at and what you need to do, it's pretty basic. So now I'm going to put the elbows together real quick before we put them both together with the uh, with the uh, the arms. Now it's very important, and I'll show you why when we get there. But if you've if you've paid attention so far, the R runner and the C runner both have uh, the upper arm piece, but they're both but they're both different. They're not identical. And there are some pieces on these runners that you don't use at all. But they ver but that varies from kit to kit. See all the kit all the different designs are kind of they're made off the same mold, but not all the pieces go on all of them. It's not like a one size fits all kind of deal. So right now I'm just taking pieces off the runner and then I'll nip them, nip the gates off. Okay, that runner's done. So as you see, we're getting, we're knocking these runners out one by one. Put these in. There we go. Well, bummer. <laughs> You know what? Let my let my fingers rest a minute. <laughs> uh man. 
Fingers are going to sleep, guys. But there we go. There's one elbow put together. And there's the other one. Okay. So I'm gonna take the R runner here, because that's what it says. Not the C runner. Um, you have, unless you're looking at him really, unless you're looking at him in person, the C, the C arms here that are on this runner are slightly smaller, like in, in the radius and the circumference. These fit on the X3 model kit, but these separately fit on the other ones, like the X4, the X2, the X1. They slightly, and they, and they fit this this type of uh, this type of joint and since they're both identical it doesn't matter which one you put on which So this slides on there, and we do, there's that arm. Now we slide this on, put on this arm. And now we still got the rest of the armor, which, you can, like I said, you can jump around, but eventually you're going to have to deal with this armor piece. So we're going to go over to... Go over to these pieces. Uh, A, A2 is what we need on both of them. So that's this piece... We do the same on this one. Uh, X3 armor wasn't like poor, as in like it was a bad model kit. It's the the shoulder joint on the X3 kit. It's different than the others, but the arms don't sometimes hold on too well. They'll fall off because the it's not real snug. Like if you go watch some of the old X3 Max Armor kits, that's what that's one of the big complaints they talk about is the uh, the, the shoulder joint. Unless unless you have like some like spray like to make it snug, you can like spray it with some stuff. It's really like like the arms will fall off if you try if you don't pose it just right or it's just it's it's really really weird x3 is a great looking kit I mean it's just that part of the design is flawed in my opinion so we got those and now we just got to put on the shoulder cuffs on the end Some of these pieces are really small, so you really got to be careful. All right. 
So now we got one more part and the arms are done. Or one more part of the arm. And that is A8 and A7. Alright. So we're putting together the the forearms. This could be a sub two model kit assembly if things go well, but I'm not pushing for sub two. <laughs> so these have to go a certain way, so you gotta make sure that the holes are lined up. Unless you're looking at it up close, you'll see a little gap, but that's something you can work out later. So now we're just going to slide those in like so. That's one. Get ready to start on the legs, which is kind of like the coolest part almost. Actually, no, it was, uh, the Basic X was the first model kit, and then after the Premium Charge Shot version, which is just a re, uh, re-coating, uh, it's a, uh, reflective coating of X, then they did X3 first. X3, what, the armor was the first X armor, after the, after the regular X. Then they did a Hyperchip version. Which is the gold armor. All right. Arms are done. Goal! Uh, they were getting better at their model kit design. They probably realized that too when they were putting it together. And it was already too late, so they maybe on the reproduction they changed. They, I know they reproduced them. Maybe they made it better on the reproductions, but I don't know. All right, now for now for the fun one. We're, we're now we're gonna get X's dash boots put together here. So the the knee joint is pretty ba it it's pretty complex. There's six pieces that put it together. And by the looks of it, let's see. It looks like we're doing the uh, the feet first, aren't we? K5 K6 okay. You see, on all the other kits, you start with the knee. Now we're starting with the ankle. That's how you. That's how accustomed I am to doing these. Like I've already started like trying to put together the knee joint when obviously we're not doing that first. And PC 
C. Alright, we do that twice. those. Okay, now we're going to put the feet together. clear pieces here. Now the next model kit that comes out after this one I think is the blade armor from X6. And if you've seen the, the uh the, the photos for that, that one's going to look insane. We're gonna take a little bit of oomph because, uh, yeah. There we go. Alright, so looks like these go over top of them. And then they get locked down with a with a different piece. So F5. That's where we got to go. So we got a special runner here. Just for this kit in the F. You'll see the F runner again when we do the buster because that's what's left on it. The buster pieces. And the buster apparently has a lot of pieces that goes into it. It's not like the other ones where it's been a basic, you know, 
put a few pieces together. I mean, this thing's pretty intricate. Now, which way does this go? Very important to get the direction correctly. It looks like it's this way. Uh, yeah, that's the way it goes. Okay. I guess we put the, the ball joint in first. Which I'm okay with. Put, now we start putting the knee joints together. So, this is all Buster for right now. I'm just going to be uh, separating all the pieces first. Boy, we're just only after an hour. Boy, this is going to be quick. This might be sub two. Not the pace I'm going. And plus, all the pieces have gone together really well. Like, I haven't, I haven't had any issues. All right, right here on piece K7. Got to be really careful around those uh, ends there because these hook into the other other pieces. So you got to be real careful not to dig too far under those, or you're gonna or you're gonna hate yourself. song we're on. I, I, I can't hear the soundtrack because I've got my speaker turned down so it doesn't pick up on the microphone. So you don't get an echo which would drive you all insane. Uh, 
All right, so let's see. Da, da, da. All right, there's one knee joint put together. First part of the knee joint, and now you got another one. Because now you got to do the double, the double bend, and you got to make sure this is pointing the right direction as well. So it bends this way, and then it bends this way. So you got a really wide range of, of motion there. And every every single Rock Band X kit has these in inner joint these knee joints and elbow joints like that just about so they're all basically built or basically the same in the inside the only out the only thing outside is you know the the external part all right now the fun part probably the part everybody's waiting on front and this is the back so you always start from back to front when you slide these in just this is how they go and let's see all right, no, no gimmicks on this one. The fourth armor leg parts have a lot of different stuff going in them, but these are pretty basic. Just don't, you gotta, you gotta make sure that you're pushing them all together evenly. You're not forcing one side first and then trying to do the other. You might accidentally break something. So yeah, you don't force it. Now we do the other one. Do the same for the other leg. Start from the back. You make sure this is all right.
There we go. Looks like these are the last little blue pieces that go on it. And that little piece that, that you see when you cut the plastic, it, it's cleverly hidden when I push it in. Like you can't even see it. It's pretty seamless. Now for the... Now how do I want to cut these off? Just do it this way first. see how this comes off or what parts I need to be careful of I'm just gonna cut it off the runner first then I'll worry about what exactly is gonna get snipped there we go now let's figure this out Aha, bingo. Right, right there, it just... It showed me the way. These actually just twist right off. Which is pretty neat. Alright. Now I gotta trim the top up here. So these go on basically the same way the armor does, or the, ooh, these slide on. Ooh, that's neat. Okay, so, this slides into place. That's sick. Okay, that's pretty cool. So once you get this one started, there we go. There we go. Then it comes together right there. There we go. You can hear the squeak. Everything's lining up. Boom. It's locked in. Now for the back. Now that looks pretty seamless. Like... Only if you look at it from up close, you can see where the where they come together at. But that's really nice. So they slide. It slides straight in.
Okay. Couple pieces left to put on. Okay, four goes on this side. And five goes on this side. Look at it from the inside here. All the all the pieces line up real nice. Now there's still one piece here. I'm gonna go ahead and snip it off now. It's for the buster. That way I can go ahead and toss the runner. That's on. Let me get another. What do I need now? Oh, another C. Okay, so one of those. One of those. Had to straighten this one out a little bit. There we go. That one should pop into place. All right. Still got the remaining part of the legs. Just gonna snip off this piece for the buster coming up. All right. That runner's done. Oh no. That one hit the floor, but I, luckily I saw where it went.
drinking my sweet tea. Not far from getting done with this. This could be easily sub two. Probably will be. This this didn't take long at all. So each of these goes in a small little joint. This is going to be that leg, one leg goes one way, this one goes the other. Yeah, we'll see. that piece done with that runner there's this piece done with that runner and now I need another C PCC there's two left and they go here are done now before moving on we're going to connect everything Get him articulated correctly. There we go. 
How's that? All right. Now for the Buster. That's the last part. And then the Hadouken parts. So, now we go back to the F runner and we're going to get F6 here. This is the this is the, the internal part of the of the Buster. And B1 and W1. So W1 is the clear orange piece that goes in at the end, which is weird, but that's what it, that's what it is. So I'm curious about that at, at some point. Um, let me turn the fan on over here. <coughs> there we go. Starting to burn up a little bit. The, the run's getting hot. B5. Now you gotta be real careful you don't cut this piece. You don't cut all of this. You just cut the edge. Okay, so we're going to do one side first by the looks of it. Oh, it looks like this slides down. Is that is that correct? Is this sliding down? No. Oh, it goes in the side. Okay. Okay. So there's one side. And now we're doing the back and the front for next. And then we do the other side. So once again, you don't cut all the way to the edge. You gotta you be very careful when you gotta you have to leave a peg so that they fit on into one another. So this is the back of the buster, which will go in. Let's see. That is the back, right? Yeah, that's the back. So. I guess it goes in like that. Which is strange but I'll, I'll understand it here maybe I'm just gonna hold that there for a minute that's let's look a little tricky
this piece, B8. That's going in the front. Okay, now that does make sense. Okay, that slides. So this part, I'm trying to understand. It goes down here, dummy. At least I think it does. Yeah. I wasn't looking at it correctly. Ha! Alright, now that looks a, that looks appropriate. That's a weird way to put the buster together. I'm not gonna lie, that's... I understand why, but that just looks a little tricky. And just how the back of that looks doesn't look completely right to me, but... Whatever. Alright, so after that, we put the black rims on the sides and there's grooves in the back of them to let you know which side they go in so there's that side Now we got the other side here. And now the little red circles that go on the side of the buster, those get put in. And they got little D slots in the back of them, so they only go in one specific spot. I just screwed that one up. <laughs> luckily, luckily you can fix it. Yeah, that that's supposed to go the other direction. All right, so this is gonna take a little work. Luckily, I can pop that out and. This is where my little toothpicks come in handy.
get my piece back. Aha! Luckily, I have a little chisel set. I can drill a hole in the back of it. Or I can use a hobby knife. That works just as good. And I'll need to to get that piece back out. Oh no, that's sub two. I gotta back up a minute. Let me grab me a There we go. Put this in the rot hole this time. There we go. Apparently you can put them upside down, and that's what I did. So that's unfortunate. All right, now for the opposite half of the buster. Okay. Get this one piece off of here. Okay, that's it for that runner. Now there's two tiny pieces here. Uh, we'll get to those in a minute. But right now let's get the let's get the opposite end of the buster put together. Uh, looks like B3 goes in a certain way. Oh, this goes into this. Okay. That that's a little tricky. You gotta be a little careful there. Okay. Uh which way are we looking at the buster here? Oh, 
Okay, there's that. Okay, now this is the tricky part. Okay, you slide in the yellow pieces first, and then you put the caps over them, apparently. I'm going to do these one at a time. Oh, they go right there. And these have to go a specific way. So these go up. And then what's going to happen, that little white cap's going to go over this. And I dropped it on the carpet. Luckily, I can see it. take the clear orange pieces to put on the ends of the buster here. They're basically like the helmet pieces from before. These are identical so it doesn't matter which one goes where. But they are a little annoying to put on. that one that got caught on my shirt <laughs> Yeah, these little pieces are annoying. Okay, now let's put these caps over. Also, notice the detail I put in on that. If the camera gets in the focus. There you go. There's little lines in the little part and the big one. Alright, and now we've throw this together. And there's the buster. Now for the final part, the Hadoken. It, it's basically it's gonna it's basically like a clear charge shot.
Like, uh... The Rising Fire X has a red, an orange one. The Premium Charge Shot has, like, a pink. Like, they all come different colors. So you look for the groove that goes in this. Tail end here. This is always the hard part. You, it only goes one way, or if you, it can go m either way, but. Gotta make sure it's on the right way. come off of this all right I think they're all gone now well shit there's always one up here that I can never see We take this little bad boy off. Okay, so this goes on the bottom. 
which one is the bottom. Looks like this is the bottom. This is the top. And then you put these little buggers on and there you go. GG There you go So now now to set up the poses So that this is interchangeable like if you want to set X up on an aerial pose you switch this piece out and you, if you have like the uh the flying base uh, that is compatible with these, you can set them up in aerial poses. So, like so, you can switch that little piece in, and then you can set them up on an aerial pose if you wished. But there you go. That's it. Now we'll do some uh, posing here for a minute. So something like this, if the camera was a little bit angled a little better. Something along those lines. So there's one pose for you. Or if you wanted to Swap out the hands. And then swap out the buster. Maybe something like this. There's you another pose. Something like that. But here's probably the, the one everybody wants to see. There's X1, X2, there's X3, and then here's the normal X. And these are all interchangeable. Now what's noticeable is that this blue, if you look real hard, this blue here is different than this blue. 